Dear friends, it is the end of the year 2021. It's time for people to embrace new hopes and prepare for the arrival of a new year. 25 years ago at this time, members of Tai Chi Minh were unable to prepare for the happy holiday because of the persecution by prosecutor Ho Kwan Ren, who illegally detained Tai Chi Minh Grandmaster, his wife, and some of the Tai Chi Minh members. Today, 25 years later, we're still waiting for the justice to prevail. Although the Taiwanese Supreme Court has ruled back in 2007 that Tai Chi Minh was not guilty without any tax evasion, Taiwanese IRS did not respect the court's ruling and illegally auctioned off Tai Chi Minh's secret land in August 2020. It is our New Year's wish to end this endless persecution of Tai Chi Minh. It is also the hope of several international experts and scholars. This is because it is not acceptable to see persecution of freedom of religion in Taiwan, which claims to be a democratic country. Next, let's take a look at the video clips about the 25 year fight of Tai Chi Minh, Shi Fu, and Li Tzu. Even having the ordeal, they still uphold a genuine love for our world.检察官用你的眼神就可以判断是不是要起诉你的话That day, I witnessed a scene that was only possible from a movie. Watching the inspectors rush in with ammunition, we all froze. In the loud scolding like in slow motion, though no one opened fire, the camera flashed in front of my eyes felt like continuous gunfire, so dazzling and unreal. Frowning, squinting, there were many doubts in my heart, but looking at the detained people and objects, my body started to shake uncontrollably. This must be a dream, a nightmare. Tears blurred my vision. I squeezed my arm only to find that this was a reality, more terrifying than a nightmare. I needed to wake up, needed someone to tell me what happened. This is just a nightmare after all. On December 19, 1996, Prosecutor Ho Kwan Ren, in the name of a religious crackdown, searched 12 Taiji Min academies with 19 troops, accompanied by major media outlets, as if he wanted to paint a heroic image under the spotlight, rather than to pursue the truth. Later, he filed an extremely outrageous indictment against the Zhang Menren of Taijimen, fabricated crimes of fraud, abused the power of authority, forced coercion to obtain confessions, and forged documents. The whole process severely damaged the people's trust in the judicial system. With the media's lavish reports and ridiculous exaggeration, suddenly the Taiji Min Dizzi fell victim to this political purge. It is obvious that Ho Kuan Ren tried to exterminate Taiji Min, and the plan was working. The innocent and kindness of the group were erased overnight, leaving the pure white uniforms cast in shadow. Thousands of families were victimized, and the harm endured was not explainable with words. Ah! 
Taijimen has been innocent from the beginning. Many Taijimen deeds decry injustice as Taijimen has suffered unjustified cases of extermination for no reason. It is the Zhangmen of Taijimen Academy and his wife who suffer the most, but they and their disciples have never given up on defending their innocence. After many efforts, the criminal case was finally determined by the Supreme Court of Taiwan in 2007. Taijimen was not guilty and had no tax evasion. The Supreme Court also confirmed the nature of the Jing Shili as gifts, and there was no taxation problem. All innocent defendants received national compensation, further proving that this case was a false case from the beginning. A few short sentences, less than 30 seconds, but behind it was a long 10 years and 7 months. The criminal court summoned about 200 witnesses, 58 courts, and took a total of 9,570 minutes. Every minute, every second carries with it countless blood, tears, and grievances. Finally, the belated justice of the innocence from the criminal case was ushered, but the taxation derived from the criminal case did not end as it should have. Due to the corruption of the NTB and the administrative court, a whole new round of nightmares began. But not only was the tax bill not revoked, the Administrative Enforcement Agency of the Ministry of Justice, Xinzu Branch, also enforced the option of Taijun's land in Miaoli Mountain. It is intolerable. We have been bullied for too long. So we decided to put on our headscarves, protest on the streets, clench our fists. We roared. What did we do wrong? This roar has lasted for 25 years. 25 years! 9,125 days, a quarter of a century. How many people have dedicated the best time in their lives for this? They were youth, filled with righteous indignation. Now they are gray-haired human rights fighters. They were young and beautiful women. Now they hold the hands of their children while protesting on the street. They were cheerful and innocent children. Now they stand on the front line speaking through the microphone. They were even allies who could not resist the passage of time, who passed away before justice arrived. In this violent storm, he no longer has another existence like a parallel universe. All because of Zhang Ren's great spirit, he waved his sleeves and said, we still have to be patriotic. Because we love this land, we have to fight. So we dried our tears and continued to roar, but this time the scene was different. We are promoting Chinese martial arts with traditional weapons and feather fans to show the beauty and essence of the culture. In front of the president's office where we were protesting, we are now celebrating the nation's birthday. We were invited 10 times to perform at the national birthday celebration and 8 times we performed on Ketagalan Boulevard. We did an important opening at the 2017 Universide. We won the martial arts championship in Japan and performed at the Sydney Opera House during the Olympics to promote love and peace. The group has traveled across five continents to countless countries to promote the importance of conscience. In our homeland, we protest on the streets. But in the United Nations, we received countless compliments. It was not that there was no pain, tears never stopped flowing, but because we care, we endure the sorrow. Because of faith, we bear the humiliation. This is all because we hope to show our smiles.
Our hometown is surrounded by the sea and the persecution put us in a situation like that of an isolated island. Fortunately, when we reached out for help, what we got was assistance from outside the island. Because of how absurd the case is, it has received a lot of attention by the international community that values human rights. Professor Kenneth Jacobson, the former advisor to US President Clinton, who has been following the case for a long time, published an article after studying the case and said that the prosecutor's way of handling the case is so absurd that his mental health is questionable. The mere statement of that would cause individuals and should cause individuals to question the sanity of the prosecutor. Dr. Massimo Intravene, the Italian founder of the research for New Religions and Belief, which helps those suffering from religious persecution, mentioned this is not a domestic or technical tax case, but a human rights case based on freedom of religion or belief. He also stressed that there's no time limitation to fight against human rights persecution, and that the international community has the responsibility to help resolve this case together. In San Francisco, Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, Honolulu, and New York, we have been protesting in front of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office. In December 2021, we went to the political center of the world, Washington, D.C., to petition in front of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office. Those who walked or drove by expressed their support by honking or thumbing up, and some even joined us in holding protest posters. We have visited many scholars and experts in many countries and talked about the case. They all expressed shock and inconceivability. Their support shows us that we are not alone on this road of seeking justice, that we are not helplessly isolated. We only hope the Taiwanese authorities will open their eyes and not trap themselves due to their inactions. On September 19, 2020, a group of volunteers from the Legal and Tax Reform League was holding posters at a crossroads in Xinzhu when all of a sudden a big group of police officers showed up questioning the volunteers. The atmosphere then was very tense and the police officers started to shout at the volunteers. During the chaos, an officer forcefully stuffed the sign into the hands of one of the volunteers, Ms. Huang. The officer accused her of criminal behavior and handcuffed her without explaining why. Without knowing what crime she has committed, Ms. Huang was taken to Liu Jia police station, then transferred to the district prosecutor's office overnight. An innocent volunteer was tortured for almost eight hours. After she was released by the prosecutor's office, she felt dizzy and was sent to a hospital. She was later diagnosed with acute stress disorder. The next day, the precinct chief of Zhubei Xinzhu County Police Bureau held a press conference trying to discredit Ms. Huang. He smeared an unarmed elderly volunteer as a criminal, lying about the truth of the incident which is very similar to the process of the Taichman tax case 25 years ago, first detaining and intimidating innocent people, then publicly denouncing the innocent in front of the media. For us who have been persecuted for 25 years, it is like sprinkling salt on our wounds, adding fuel to the fire. We thought this would have happened in a totalitarian state, but it unbelievably happened to us at a place we know so well, in a so-called democratic country. But even so, we are not giving up, because we love our country, because we want it to become a better place. For 25 years, we have not been afraid. No matter how hard the rain falls, how hot the blazing sun shines, the raging fire in our hearts will never be extinguished. What ignites the fire is the anger from being mistreated. What ignites the fire is the pain the taxation victims suffered. What ignites the fire is the perseverance to pursue justice. Even if there is more injustice, more pains, we will still roar. As long as the case is not resolved, we will not give up. We will continue to move forward. If the fabricated Taijiman tax case is not redressed, the raging fire will never be extinguished. Taiwanese government needs to understand that the Taijiman case is not a domestic tax case, but a case of political persecution, a case of persecution of religion or belief. It is a violation of human rights.
We all know that if we place a piece of paper with raw information in the copy machine, the next document you print, no matter how many copies you make, will be wrong because the original document is incorrect. The Taiwanese Taxation Bureau bases its taxation on the indictment, the content of which are wrong. And the Taiwanese Taxation Bureau still copied them using false and falsified information for taxation and auctioning off the people's property for national ownership. This is obviously not an aversion fault, but deliberately bullying people. It is not acceptable in a democratic country. We believe that the majority of the people in Taiwan are good people, and we cannot let a few unscrupulous officials hijack the democratic mechanism. Next, let's listen to the testimony of Mu. My name is Nuna Tom. I'm originally from Myanmar. My country loves democracy, whereas Taiwan does. However, the Taiwanese government does not treat its citizens democratically. The Tai Chi Man case is a violation of international human rights law. I have a lot of questions in my mind. Why? Why? Why is this so? That shouldn't be the case. I march for human rights and the Tai Chi Man case in Los Angeles, Hawaii, and Washington, D.C., alongside my Tai Chi Man brothers and sisters. I travel to Washington, D.C. with my 10-year-old son and husband in D.C. We stood in front of Tecru and yet for human rights and pleading with Taiwan's government to return our sacred Tai Chi Man land. All of our protests are legal and encouraged. We were guarded by U.S. police. People cheered us on. We have freedom in the United States, which is true democracy, freedom of speech and belief. I have been a member of Tai Chi Man for 25 years. My self teaches how to be conscious and to be the best of the best. I also learn philosophy and life wisdom from self In Tai Chi Man, we cultivate my heart. By practicing Tai Chi Man Qigong, I've improved my social communication, gained confidence to speak up, and strengthened my immune system. Tai Chi Man is like a second family to me. By teaching of our sifu, all brother and sister encourage one another and compass and spread love and peace. Tai Chi Man is a self-cultivation and ancient Qigong Manpa. It's also a non-profit organization. My sifu and Tai Chi Man brothers and sisters spread love and peace in over 100 countries through culture performance and bell ceremonies. The trips are all self-funded and no sponsorship was ever accepted. How about you, Taiwanese government official? Please keep your eye open and see the truth. Please fully comprehend the Tai Chi Minh case. The Taiwan administration bonus assistance is completely groaneous. I believe it is to motivate government employees to work more efficiently. However, test officer and public servants abuse it by filing broker cases and issuing incorrect testation base. That is a form of abuse and a violation against Taiwanese citizens. It's been a quarter century. I hope Taiwan government does the right thing and correct the mistake. The Tai Chi Man case must be solved right now. Uphold the conscience and do the right thing. It's our responsibility as humans. The development of the country is also like this. If officials are willing to uphold conscience and follow the rule, they will definitely benefit the people and the country will be able to enjoy long-lasting peace and prosperity. Politics is for everyone and everyone has the right to make their voices heard to help make society and the country a better place. Members of Tai Chi Man went to Washington, D.C. for the fourth time this year to make their voices heard. Let's take a look at their actions and aspirations. As the year draws to a close, 
Taijiman Qigong Academy, and the Action Alliance to Redress 1219 returned to Washington, D.C. for the fourth time in 2021 to demand justice from the Taiwan government. Taijiman is back in Washington, D.C. for the fourth time this year because our case has not been resolved yet. Today, Taijiman Dizi are coming from all over the world. Yesterday was the fourth time that Taijiman had gone to Tekra in Washington, D.C., but we have yet to meet the representative shell. In addition to protesting at Tekro, Taijiman presented its case at an international forum and also held a press conference on Capitol Hill. And today we held the first ever international press conference because we want the government to hear our voices and truly give us the justice that we deserve. The press conference featured Dr. Massimo Intravigne and members of Taijiman Qigong Academy who presented its case to the global media. The Taijiman case is a case where human rights of the Taijiman community were violated through corruption. The Taiwan government is not understanding the Taijiman case in its proper terms. It is not a domestic or technical tax case, but it's a human rights case that based on freedom of religion or belief. So it's great time Taijiman doesn't rece receive the repeated answer that because of a statute of limitation questions, the case should not be solved because it's a political case. It's a case of human rights. It's a case of freedom of religion or belief. And it's a case uh, impacting negatively on the international image of Taiwan. Members of Taijiman and the Action Alliance to Redress 1219 provided background context for the case. Dr. Hong Daozi established the Taijiman Qigong Academy in Taiwan in 1966. Now it has 15 academies around the world. Dr. Hong, our Shifu, has continued to guide us in the journey to spread love and peace around the world. Taijiman Dizi helped themselves and others through practicing Qigong, strengthening their bodies, cultivating their hearts and moral character. The case of Taiji Man, for example, was listed by the Control Yuan in 2005 as one of the major human rights protection cases in the general report and the work of human rights protection of the Control Yuan. The text of Taiji Man shows that the system of tax bonuses granted to public servants can lead to undue fiscal and judicial harassment. Taiji Men and the Action Alliance to Readdress 1219 are seeking support from the United States government to advocate for their case. For human rights! For justice! These protests are not good for the international image of Taiwan. To achieve a peaceful political solution, the only way is that Taiwan hears from his friends and primarily his friends are United States, so, so Taiwan, Taiwan needs, needs to hear from the United States, States that we live in an historical moment when Taiwan needs a maximum of support from his international friends. But a precondition for this support to be effective is for Taiwan to put its own house in order. The year 2021 culminates a quarter century of Taijimen fighting for justice from the Taiwan government. For justice! For justice! So far, there has been no response from the top representative at Tekro or the Taiwan government. We are going to continue to reach out through the international community to put pressure on the Taiwanese government to correct the mistakes that were made 25 years ago. If it's not resolved, we will come back. Fight for human rights! Fight for justice! In the film, we see that the members of Taiji Men are not afraid of hardships and difficulties, and they are determined to work to rectify the Taiji Men case. It is not only for themselves, but also to help Taiwan to keep the reputation of democracy. Taiwanese government should pay attention to this and immediately rectify the Taiji Men on local case that has dragged on for 25 years. Next, let's welcome Haha, a 10-year-old Taiji Men Dizi, who would like to speak up for this unlawful case. Hello, my name is Howard Kong, and I am a Tai Chi Man teacher. I am 10 years old, and I came to Washington, D.C. with my parents to 
and brothers and sisters from Tai Chi Minh to protest about the Tai Chi Minh case. It has been going on for 25 years and it should be ended already after the Supreme Court said that Tai Chi Minh was innocent. And I participated in the first international press conference about the Tai Chi Minh case. And I attended class in the middle of protesting and I sang the love song. We came looking for international help. Fight for justice. Fight for human rights. Fight for freedom of religious and belief. President Tsai Ing-wen, please listen to the voices of the people and the appeal of international experts, scholars, and also the calling of overseas Taiwanese people. Don't take the blame for the bad things done by a few unscrupulous officials. It is time to put an end on the persecution of Tai Chi Minh. Next, let's listen to the testimony from Sandy. It's my great honor to participate in today's forum. I've been practicing Tai Chi Minh Qigong for 25 years. My parents, siblings, and my sons are also Tai Chi Minh Dizi. I'm the middle child in my family. When I was little, I had no confidence and also fear of facing the crowds. It was really hard for me to speak in front of many people. However, I'm so grateful for my parents taking me to Tai Chi Minh when I was 18. Under Shifu's guidance, I practiced Qigong to improve my physical and mental health. Through breathing exercise and meditations, it helped me to be calm and no longer get nervous as easily as before. I learned to open my heart, speak up to express my thoughts and become the master of my own life. When I become a mother, Practice Qigong also helped me to have physical strength and energy to take care of my children. When I face challenging with my children, I'm able to calm myself down first and then use my wisdom to solve the problems. I also learn how to be a good listener to my children, understand their needs and respect them as human beings. I start to pull my pride aside as a mother. My relationship with my children becomes more harmonious and closer. Tai Chi Minh Los Angeles branch has been established for 21 years. It has benefited many families. We are also actively spreading positive energy in the community and around the world. Our effort is to bring stability to the society. Tai Chi Minh Chigo Academy has visited 101 countries and conducted more than 3,000 performances. Tai Chi Minh's dedication to community service and the promotion of love, peace, and conscience has been praised and recognized by government officials in the U.S. and important leaders from all over the world. What we have done has made me feel so proud of being a Tai Chi Minh Dizi. However, you can't believe such a promoter of love and peace group has been persecuted for 25 years by the Taiwanese government. It began in 1996 in Taiwan when a prosecutor named Ho Kuan Ren used fabricated evidence and fake witnesses to accuse Tai Chi Minh of fraud and tax evasions. In 2007, the Supreme Court ruled that Tai Chi Minh was innocent of all charges and did not owe any taxes. The red envelopes given by the Dizi to the Shifu were gifts and tax-free. Taiwan's National Taxation Bureau 
disregarded the Supreme Court's decisions and continued to impose unjustified taxes on Taiji men. In August 2020, the rural government officials unlawfully auctioned off Taiji men's land, which is intended for a self cultivation center. We have tried all methods in Taiwan and hope that the Taiwanese government will listen to the voices of the people, stop the persecutions of religious beliefs, withdraw the illegal tax bill, and return the sacred land in to Taiji men. But after 25 years of waiting, they did not admit their mistake and correct them. As Taichman did overseas, it's heartbreaking to see the Taiwanese government treat such a good group so unfairly. We are Taiwanese Americans. Taiwan is our root, and we love Taiwan very much. Although we are in the United States, we wish to contribute to Taiwan's democracy. Therefore, we have decided to speak up to let more people know that Taiwan as a democratic country also has persecution of freedom of religion or beliefs. This year, we visited Washington DC four times. In July, we participated in the 2021 International Religious Freedom Summit we were able to share this case with many international religious scholars and the human rights activists and seek their attention and help. When they heard our case, they were shocked to hear what Taiji Man had gone through. They strongly urged President Tsai to act decisively and urgently to rectify the Taiji Man case. In addition, Taiji Mendizi from all over the United States wrote letters to U.S. senators and members of the House of Representatives to bring their attention to the Taiji Man persecutions case. When we went to D.C. in early December, we were able to have this opportunity to meet with Congresswoman Young Kim who took time out of her busy schedule to meet with us. I was touched to see that she was willing to listen our voice and do her best to help us. During the meeting, she also thanked us for what we have been doing to bring positive energy to the community. She encouraged us to keep doing the right thing and keep moving forward our goals. She will also do her best to express her concern about our case to the State Department and will contact the Tikra office in DC to understand our case. I can see Congresswoman's sincerity that she is willing to help us. Government officials who are willing to listen to the voice of the people will bring hope to their country. However, we have been hoping to meet with Ambassador Shaw at the Tikra office, but Ambassador Shaw has always been unable to meet with us. We even protested outside the Tikra building to express our, uh, express our voice and still got no response from her. As Taiwanese Americans, it is really sad to see this scene. In the International Religious Freedom Summit this year, Secretary of State Blinken stated in a speech that the U.S. is committed to advance human rights and religious freedom is a vital component of our democracy. I believe that freedom of religion is essential for a democratic country. 
I can see how sincerely the U.S. government is willing to help countries from around the world that are suffering from the persecutions of human rights and religious beliefs. This is how a democratic country should have. I call upon the Taiwan government to rectify the Taijiman case and return our illegally confiscated land. And Taiwan can be a true democracy, respecting human rights and the freedom of religion and beliefs. Thank you. We have been holding a webinar in the topic of religious freedom and human rights, the Tai Chi Minh case for three months. The so-called truth is more discerning because there is only one truth. We believe that there is conscience, justice, and righteousness in this world, and that we can face all difficulties with hope and courage. We sincerely hope that the Taiwanese government will immediately rectify the Tai Chi Minh unlawful case and return its sacred land. Today, the program comes to an end, and we hope that the cohesion of the righteous heart will be like the wind rising up. The world's citizens can enjoy human rights together. Let's have the true love to welcome upcoming New Year. Thank you.